Tonight, the former Cesar Mayer says he's not guilty of multiple drug charges. And a man on trial for murder charges for the third time says his successful appeal was well-deserved. Plus, more information after nine-year-old Byron Casanova passed away on Saturday. We have those stories and more tonight on a Friday night edition of News 24 at 10. Live, breaking news source. This is News 24 at 10. And good evening. Thanks for joining us. We have a lot of news to get to tonight. But first, we now know there was an open DCFS case when nine-year-old Byron Casanova passed away on Saturday. We spoke with Byron's second grade teacher, Tim Key, who remembered the nine-year-old as a loving friend. But that will never be an option for Byron Casanova. According to the Johnston City Police Department, Byron committed suicide on Saturday, March 23rd. This was just four days after a DCFS caseworker visited the house where Byron lived with his mother and her boyfriend. According to the DCFS, there was a long history between DCFS and Byron and his siblings dating back to 2016. The first report that DCFS received was on February 3rd, 2016, when someone reported to DCFS that Byron's mother was ingesting Byron's ADHD medication and Byron would, was acting out in school. The reporter also stated that Byron's mother slapped Byron in the face and told Byron that she hates him. The report was investigated and ultimately unfounded by DCFS. The next time DCFS got a report was on March 25th, 2018 when someone told DCFS that Byron was frequently absent from school. The reporter was concerned that Byron's mother and her boyfriend were using and selling Byron's ADHD medication, also expressing concerns that Byron might be exposed to methamphetamine because Byron and his younger brother were shaking and picking at sores. An investigation was conducted by DCFS and was ultimately unfounded by the department. Byron's dad, Fernando Casimo Casanova, feels that the state did not do its job. On December 21st, 2018, Byron's mother gave birth to a baby girl. Two days later, on December 23rd, 2018, DCFS states the mother tested positive for THC, opioids, oxycodone, and sabutix. On December 28th, 2018, DCFS opened a case with DCFS's high-risk intact unit. A month before Byron's death, DCFS investigators learned that Byron had missed 16.5 days of school. Byron's teacher remembers Byron as someone with the biggest heart. Four days before his passing, DCFS workers noted that the cleanliness of Byron's home was a concern. The Johnston City Police and DCFS said there is an active investigation into the death of Byron Casanova. The former Cesar Mayer says he is not guilty of multiple drug charges. Ned Mitchell made that plea today in Franklin County Court after his arraignment. The special prosecutor in the case is still in the process of gathering evidence for Mitchell's lawyer to view before a trial date is set. Police arrested Mitchell at his home in January and he faces five felony charges for drugs and armed violence. He served as mayor from 1979 to 2013 and also spent a brief period as an Illinois state senator. The judge set a pre-trial conference for May 31st. 
Elena Kays was also arrested with Mitchell and faces similar charges. She also pleaded not guilty today. A man on trial for murder charges for the third time says his successful appeal was well-deserved. Donald Lee faces charges in the death of Brittany Andrews, a woman who died from a gunshot wound in May 2013. His first trial in February 2014 ended with a mistrial. Three months later, another jury convicted him, but that conviction was thrown out by an appeals court and sent back to the trial court. At a hearing Friday, prosecutors and Lee's lawyers discussed a few motions in the case, one dealing with where evidence is stored, another dealing with the testimony of a police officer who recently died. A third motion speaks, uh, seeks to keep a jury from hearing Lee's interviews with police, a key issue when it came to the appeal. Franklin County State's Attorney Evan Owens accuses Lee of shooting Andrews during an argument. The two were dating at the time and were out drinking the night of the shooting. The first trial ended when the jury inadvertently heard about Lee's criminal history in police interviews. His criminal history was previously barred from trial. A second jury convicted Lee in May 2014, but in January 2018, an appeals court ruled investigators violated Lee's rights when they interviewed him. Lee's lawyers want those interviews to be kept out of the trial. The judge didn't make a ruling on any of the motions discussed today. He ordered Lee to return to court for another hearing May 3rd. Law enforcement is reacting after Trooper Brooke Jones' story was hit and killed by a semi this weekend. Jones' story is the second Illinois State Police trooper killed because of his violation of Scott's Law in 75 days. She is the 15th Illinois State Police trooper involved in a violation of the law, also known as the Move Over Law. Metropolis Police Chief Harry Massey says he worked with Jones' story's husband when they were both troopers in Northern Illinois at District 13. Massey says he is still in disbelief after learning another Illinois State trooper had been hit by a passing car. Massey was a state trooper for 27 years before making the move to Southern Illinois. During the 1980s and 1990s, Massey was hit three times while on the job, twice while he was handling accidents. Massey was hurt in all three accidents. Since those accidents, Scott's Law has been created. Scott's Law means when you see law enforcement lights, tow truck lights, or even a stalled car on the side of the road, you have to move over. And if you don't, you can be penalized and have to appear in court. Anna resident Steve Frizzle is the dad of an Illinois State Trooper in Central Illinois. His son's squad car was hit nearly 10 years ago while on the scene of an accident due to winter weather. Luckily, his son wasn't hurt, but that doesn't stop Steve from the constant fear. Frizzle and Chief Messe are asking drivers to move over and slow down when you encounter a vehicle on the side of the road. Trooper Brooke Jones' story leaves behind a husband, parents, two stepchildren, and one step-grandchild. Much more local news, sports, and weather is next on News 24 at 10. But first, here's a look at your national headlines. Fox News update. In Fox News. Nothing to hide. I'm Lisa Brady. Fox News. President Trump reacting moments ago to U.S. Attorney General William Barr, who's telling top lawmakers he will release the Mueller report by mid-April, if not sooner. We'll have great uh, confidence in the Attorney General, and uh, if that's what he'd like to do, uh, I have nothing to hide. This was a hoax. This was a witch hunt. Uh, I have absolutely...
absolutely nothing to hide. Several House committees set a deadline of April 2nd, next Tuesday, for the full Mueller report to be released. In his letter, Barr describes a painstaking process, along with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, to decide which parts of the report might have to be redacted by law. But he says there's no plan to allow the White House a privilege review before it's released. There's pushback already from the House Judiciary Committee Chairman, Democrat Jerry Nadler, who says the Tuesday deadline stands and that Barr should work with the committee to request a court order for the release of any grand jury information. President Trump has a new vacancy to fill. The head of the Small Business Administration, Linda McMahon, is stepping down. She has been a superstar. Uh, the, uh, the fact is that I've known her for a long time. I knew she was good, but I didn't know she was that good. She has been one of our all-time favorites. McMahon alongside the president at his Florida estate for the announcement. He says she'll be helping with his re-election campaign. Another death just confirmed from those faulty Takata airbags that can explode with too much force. Honda says the death happened in Arizona in June of last year. That's the 24th person known to have been killed by the airbags worldwide. There have been more than 200 injuries as well, and millions of those airbags have been recalled. The end of the quarter on Wall Street, and it ends with a high note. The Dow up 211 today to 
All right, thanks, Terry. Turning to Norris City tonight, where Air Force Technical Sergeant Joseph Ullman surprised his two daughters and several nieces and nephews at Norris City Omaha Elementary School. An assembly on the last day before spring break that was disguised as a celebration of the school's volleyball team and Cardinal Pride in general seemed to be the perfect setup for a surprise homecoming. Just before his cue to walk out of the holding room, he mentioned he's, quote, a little nervous now. While he's anxiously waiting to surprise his family, he grabs two bouquets of flowers. Meanwhile, Mom is using her daughter Annabella's birthday as an excuse, getting her two girls up in front of the rest of the school. The girls are there to open Annabella's surprise gift, but then quickly realize there's nothing in the bag. So who planned the big surprise? That credit goes to Allman's wife and retired Air Force Technical Sergeant Sarah Allman. She didn't initially plan it on being a big affair, saying, quote, I had initially planned to surprise them in class. Mrs. Marsh said, how, you, how would you feel about doing it in the gym? And so they ended up throwing it all together for me. Joseph Allman says it wasn't any easier being away from family duties at home. If he wants anything to be celebrated, it's his family. And for our full interview with him, you can visit our website, www.siln24.com. Turning to a News 24 special tonight on a story we first brought you at the top of the broadcast. Nine-year-old Byron Casanova passed away this week, or excuse me, last weekend, after committing suicide on his home, or at his home in the 300 block of 12th Street in Johnston City, Byron attended Lincoln Elementary School in Johnston City, and joining us right now is Shelly Smiley. She is the principal at Lincoln Elementary School, and has met obviously and talked to uh, Byron Casanova many times. She joins us by phone right now. Shelly, was Byron a good kid?
And how is your school dealing with the passing of Byron? All right, thanks, Shelly, for joining us tonight. We'll go ahead and leave you alone, as I'm sure you're going through this tough time as well. And um, we'll or we'll have more on the on Byron's story on our website a little bit later on tonight. And uh, you can look for that again at www.siln24. And be sure to visit our Facebook page. We've got much more content regarding Byron's life and legacy on our page as well. We'll be right back on News 24.